Hello students, I am Mohammed Ali. Welcome to my virtual classroom and let's begin with today's lecture. Enjoy. Okay, everyone. So we start off with chemical energetics A2 syllabus. Before we start off, I hope that you have a clear idea about enthalpy of formation, enthalpy of combustion, atomization, enthalpy of solution, neutralization. I hope they're all clear on your tips. So we start off with the A2 part and we start off with the enthalpy of lattice energy. Okay, I must tell you that okay, lattice energy is actually of ionic compounds. Right, and it's always exothermic. I mean, lattice association energy. Just for uh, a know how, if the gaseous ions react together and they form one mole of a compound, the heat evolved is actually lattice energy. So it is the enthalpy change. When one mole of a compound is formed from its gaseous ions. Like for example, if I have Na plus gas plus chloride ion gas, it gives you NaCl solid. The heat evolved is called as enthalpy of lattice energy of NaCl. Similarly, let's say it's Mg plus two gas, O minus two gas, it gives you MgO solid. It's called as enthalpy of lattice energy of MgO. Okay, I must tell you one thing about it. Basically, look, these gaseous ions react to ionic compound. Right? The gaseous ions are reacting and giving you ionic compound. Are you seeing that ionic bonds are being produced? So can we say that okay, enthalpy of lattice energy is a measure of strength of ionic bonding? But remember, it does not measure the strength of a single ionic bond. Right? Why? Because there are so many ionic bonds of different strengths in all directions in an ionic lattice. Like, I hope you know from A1, each magnesium ion is surrounded by six oxide ions and vice versa. And same goes for NaCl. So basically, enthalpy of lattice energy is actually a measure of the strength of ionic bonding, right? Let's say, for example, if I say that NaCl key value is, let's say it's minus 100, please, it's hypothetical, please, it's hypothetical value. And let's say for MgO, it's minus 200. So I can easily say that okay, MgO has greater lattice energy and it will have stronger ionic bonds, right? Ionic bonds, not ionic bond, right? Okay, one uh, very important thing to highlight here is I think a term called as lattice dissociation enthalpy. What is lattice enthalpy? Lattice association, for example, if I write a reverse, NaCl solid, it gives you Na plus gas plus chloride ion gas. Now, this is called as lattice dissociation enthalpy. And mind it, it's endo. I mean, it's not exo. So please be careful in your paper that whether lattice energy is asked or given or lattice of dissociation enthalpy is asked or given. Right? So guys, when you learn, I think it's uh, exo, so uh, I hope you remember from A1 that exo means arrow is downward in energy profile diagram. So I can say that okay, if this is, let's say, magnesium ion gas, oxide ion gas, so arrow goes down and this becomes MgO, the lattice energy. I will remember upward arrow is for exit, uh, you know, upward arrow is for endothermicity and downward for exothermicity. Now, in order to move on further, the students of A-level, while learning lattice energy concept, they should know that about this concept, we should know explanations. I mean, comparison 
between lattice energy of ionic compounds and second is calculations calculations we have born haber cycle the famous but very easy and solubility equation Uh, which of course will soon prove to enthalpy of solutions equals to enthalpy of hydration minus enthalpy of lattice energy. So by the way, bohr neighbor and solubility equation, both are very fine examples of Hess law. Okay, let's start off with the explanations first and then we'll do calculations. Guys, uh, since I told you earlier that lattice energy is a measure of ionic bonding strength and you know from O level that ionic bond does depend on the charge and size of ion. If the size is small and the charge is greater, I think ions will attract more firmly and stronger ionic bond is produced. Now you know now that if the bond is stronger, lattice energy will be stronger. So jo factors ionic bond strength go fed karte hain, wohi factors lattice energy will be fed karenge. But they are arranged in a formula that lattice energy is proportional to Q plus into Q minus or R plus plus R minus. This formula is not for calculation. I must say you categorically. This formula is specifically for explanations, please. And can you see that okay, lattice energy is actually proportional to charge irrespective of cation anion. But I think lattice energy is inverse radius the cation or anion you can see it from the graph isn't it interesting so basically in order to learn this let's see let's learn it through a trend we will see it down the group and across the period let's see it down the group first you can take any group so let's say group one i'm taking the same type of compounds to draw a nice comparison the lithium chloride Sodium chloride, potassium chloride, rubidium chloride, then a cesium chloride. I think they all are positive one, negative one. Right? If I compare these two together, then can I say that potassium ion has a greater radius than sodium ion? Right? Now, while drawing comparison, how will you draw it? You have to use this formula to draw the comparison. Now, it's very simple. If you have to tell the difference between two species, so find the reason of difference. If you won't tell why they are similar, so find reason of similarity. Now, I'm asking you that why, I mean, explain that whether which compound NaCl or KCl has high lattice enthalpy? So it means I'm asking the difference. Now, let's see. Na is positive 1, K is positive 1. I think charge in both are same. So it's not reason of difference. Cl is negative 1. It's negative 1. I think it's same. It's not reason of difference. Anionic radius, chloride and chloride, both are same. It means anionic radius is also same. Oh, but yes. Cationic radius is different. Down the group, size of cation increases. I think potassium is a greater cation. I mean, it's a bigger cation. So if radius is greater, so lattice energy should be lesser of the ionic compound. So we say that NaCl should have more exolattice energy. I mean, more value of lattice energy. So guys, when you move down the group, we can say ionic radius increases. And we can say lattice enthalpy decreases. Acha, I specifically ionic. I didn't write a cationic radius because if I group 7, ki baat kiru, I know the trend is same, please. But what if it, it's actually AGF, it's AGCL, it's AGBR, it's AGI. I think all are plus 1, negative 1. Size of cation is now same, I think, but size of anion increases, right? So we can say that ionic radius increases. Now, it's actually 
anine in the previous example it was cation so i think anionic radius will increase and lattice enthalpy should decrease so the fact remains same down the group enthalpy of lattice energy actually increases okay now what happens across the period अच्छा हमारे स्टेबल्स में बड़ा फेमस है पीरियड थ्री कि हम बातें करते हैं बेसिकली पीरियड थ्री राइट इट्स एक्चुअली सोडियम मैग्नीशियम एल्यूमिनियम ये मेटालिक हो गए फिर इफ आई कम टू नॉन मेटल्स लेट्स से तो फिर इट्स फॉस्फरस सल्फर क्लोरीन आर्गॉन ओके यानी कि द टोटल एलिमेंट्स आर सोडियम सिमलीम सिलिकॉन फॉस्फर सल्फर क्लोरिन आर्गॉन These are elements across the spirit three. चले let's talk about. Let's say for example, if I have a uh, sodium oxide, let's say magnesium oxide, let's say aluminium oxide. I'm not taking silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine oxide because they turn actually covalent. Let's talk about ionic only. It's plus one minus two plus two minus two plus three minus two. Can you see across the period what is happening? So let's use this formula, right? So enthalpy of lattice energy proportional to Q plus into Q minus over R plus plus R minus. I think charge of cation is different. Yes, charge of anion is same. Cardne. Radius of anion oxide in everyone. Yes, it's common. But the cationic radius is different. Yes. Can you see across the period, across the period, charge increases, and therefore lattice energy should also increase. Moreover, in ionic radi, uh, sorry, ion ions radius is decreasing, so lattice should increase. I think both these factors are explaining that across the period, lattice energy should actually increase. So that's a fact, actually, right across the period. Lattice energy should increase, right? Now, how do we write it? So we say that across the period, right? What happens? We say the charge of cation increases. We say that radius of cation decreases. This explains that lattice enthalpy increases. Is that so? Right. So conclusion draw करने पर down the series lattice enthalpy decreases, but across the series enthalpy of lattice energy increases. Great, brilliant. But uh, across the period, please under group three only, not group four because it turns covalent in compounds usually. Okay. अच्छा so now interesting fact here, an interesting fact. So here we have the perturbable, right? Now uh, you can see magnesium, sulfur, and Cl are a part of atmosphere three. If I talk about magnesium sulfide and magnesium chloride, now it's interesting. Oh, it's interesting. Okay, can you please see Mg is plus two, Mg is plus two, S minus two, Cl negative one. Okay, always remember this formula. Explains you. That which compound has high lattice energy? I think that K Mg plus two is common in both. I mean, charge of cation is common. Got it? Charge of anion is different. Oh, different. Anionic radius different. Yes, different. Charge of cation same. Got it? Now again, two factors are responsible for lattice energy difference. According to charge, sulfide ion has greater charge. According to charge, magnesium sulfide should has more exolattice energy. But I think that according to radius, chloride ion is a smaller radius because across the period, anionic radius decreases. So it means chloride ion is a smaller radius than sulfide ion. So if chloride is smaller, so it means magnesium chloride should have more lattice energy. Now I'm confused because earlier. Earlier, can you see here? 
right earlier these two factors were actually complementary to each other because both charge and radius were confident that across the period lattice energy increases but now can you see that okay, these two are contradictory now they are contradictory to each other so guys while handling lattice energy concept if they are contradictory follow charge right so you say that since sulfide ion has greater charge than chloride ion therefore magnesium sulfide has more exothermic lattice energy than magnesium chloride so did you notice a couple of things how did we move in a flow did you notice that while moving down the group we had only one factor to explain lattice energy difference across the period we have two factors sometimes they're complementary sometimes they're contradictory if they're complementary be happy if they're contradictory please don't be sad because charge is what you'll obey so guys here is one question for you so what do you expect MgCl to an MgCl. Mary Hall say, uh, if I talk about MgCl two, right? So I think that ke MgCl two me we have two positive and MgCl we have positive one. So I think that MgCl two is more eggs than MgCl because magnesium has greater charge and plus two and moreover its size is smaller than mg plus one because mg ne do electron lose use and shell lose karti hai to smaller size what about nscl and mgcl so i think that ke nscl is more exo than mgcl because sodium ion after losing one electron will lose its shell it has smaller radius and if it has smaller radius so of course, its lattice energy should be greater. So I hope that you're learning well. Okay, if at any point of time uh, you have a query, you want to ask questions further, you can always contact me, right, through Facebook, through my messenger, or through Instagram, or even through SMS, WhatsApp, or contact number. It'll be provided at the end of the video. Now, guys, this was explanations. Let's see calculations now, please. It's calculations. Interesting parts. Let's see Born-Haber cycle construction first. Guys, let's see Hess law first. Let's see NaCl. How many people know when sodium ion gaseous and chloride ion gaseous they give you NaCl? This is called as enthalpy of lattice energy now since you've learned a one and you know his law so i hope that okay, you know that on the reactant side there should be species which should be exactly similar to the species in the broad side because we have to make a vector now how to do it sodium ion gas i think from sodium atom gas it's called as first ionization energy. And I think sodium gas will actually come from sodium solid called as enthalpy of atomization. Cl negative ion will come from Cl atom in gaseous state. It's called as first electron affinity. And Cl atom will come from half Cl2 gas that is atomization. And since now the elements are here, elements are here, right? So over here, it should be elements Na solid and half Cl2 gas. And I think that it's worth it. Because if I write Na solid, if I write half Cl2 gas, so this equation becomes enthalpy of formation. And since you know, like Hess law, right? 
So basically, can I say this now that this, I mean, the arrows are going on, right? So can I say that okay, this arrow is going up, this plus this will be equal to this. Is that so? Now, in order to convert this into a bohr neighbor cycle, I mean, energy diagram, let's have a look at what is actually electron affinity. So what is actually electron affinity? So it is enthalpy change when one mole electron is added to one mole gaseous atom to form one mole mononegative gas sign to form one mole mononegative gaseous sign. Okay, electron affinity and first electron affinity is same concept. What is second electron affinity? It is enthalpy change when one mole electron is added to one mole mononegative gaseous sign to form one mole dinegative gas sign, isn't it? Remember that first electron affinity is always exo and subsequent are endo. Just for information, brains. First electron affinity is exo. Second electron affinity is endo. Let's say for example, right? If it's O gas plus one electron and gives you O negative one gas, let's say its value is minus 141 kilojoules per mole. Now when O minus one gas will add again to one electron, it gives you O minus two gas. Now this value is too high. 790 kilojoules per mole. Acha, mind it, that second electron affinity will always be too high value. So can I say that give first electron affinity plus second electron affinity, the answer will always be endo. Isn't it? Like in this case, it's minus 141 plus 790 the answer is plus 649 kilojoules per mole. energy? Let's say uh, force is exo, the arrow is downward. O gas plus one electron. It gives you O minus one gas. Right, this value is minus 141. And then O minus one gas. It gives you O minus two gas. This value is plus 790. Can you see that that this is endothermic, for example, O to O minus 2 is actually endo. Isn't it? So now the question rises that why the first electron affinity is exo and why subsequent are endo? So let's say why first electron affinity is exo. Okay, a simple example. I think it's a fun example, but it's worth listening. Suppose I'm a job applicant and uh, I applied for a job to Harley Davidson. Woohoo, right? Cool. So let's say I got a call saying that I've been accepted. Now I'll be jubilant. I'll be in airs. I'll be excited. I'll be shouting. And just imagine, with this excitement and shouting, if I run and run and run and I enter the gate of the Harley Davidson factory, so I think that the guards will kick me out with the same passion. Because every company has its own norms. So guys, similarly, this is an atom, let's say Harley Davidson, and this is me coming from outside. Now, when I come inside, right, I have to lose extra amount of energy. When I lose this extra energy, this makes the first electron affinity exothermic. So basically, how do we express this in chemistry? If there is a space in an atom's outer shell for an extra electron, the effective nuclear charge usually attracts an electron sufficiently 
strongly to make its electron affinity exothermic. So you say that electron loses its extra energy. But guys, why second electron affinity is endo? Now that this is common sense. Now if one electron has been added, right? So can I say it has become a negative one ion already. Electron density has increased. Now if one more electron has to enter, so now guys, electron is negative, ion is negative, electronic repulsion will rise. So to overcome repulsions, we have to spend energy. So energy is required to overcome. So energy is required to overcome repulsive forces between electron and negative ion. So that's why electron affinity is endothermic. And I think that third will be much greater. Fourth, amazingly high. Okay, now just for the sake of information, right, as uh, you A-level candidates, you must know that electron affinity is basically successive process as ionization energy was. Like in ionization energy, electrons are removed one by one. So in electron affinity, electrons are added one by one. And I think that smaller the atom, greater should be electron affinity, right? And I think that across the period, electron affinity should increase and down it should decrease. I mean, you can see the picture. So can you see that across the period, electron affinity is actually increasing and down electron affinity is actually decreasing because across the period, atomic size decreases and down the group, atomic size increases. Guys, everyone, so uh, I hope now you remember what is electron affinity. Okay, one very interesting fact over here to learn is that what is the difference between electronegativity and electron affinity? So, electronegativity is actually just the ability to gain, uh, again, to attract electronegativity. I mean, it is the ability to attract shared pair of electrons. Simple. Uh, like for example, I'll show you like, you know, a funny capture. Okay, so can you see in these two pictures, I think that the species are only getting attracted. They have not been shifted from one place to another, right? So I think that they're only being attracted, right? So, electricity is really to attract shared electrons, guys. But however, electron affinity is a complete gain of electrons. Electron affinity is a complete gain of electrons. So can you see that electron is being completely gained by an atom and it's forming a negative ion? I hope that you now have a clear idea what is the difference, main difference between electronegativity and electronegativity. Basically, by the way, electronegativity is a concept which we normally use for polarity in a covalent bond. Electron affinity, electron transferred ions are produced, you know? Okay. So now guys, we now know what is lattice energy. We now know how to calculate lattice energy for once for all, we have law dekha. But firstly, we learned electron affinity. I'm actually back to this Hess law. I'm scrolling back. Can you see? So I'm back to this Hess law. Let's convert this Hess law into Born-Haber cycle, right? So let's see the Born-Haber cycle of NaCl. Guys, Born-Haber cycle always starts from zero. And I already know that in A-level, all elements in the standard states are at zero joules of energy. So at zero, we write 
Na solid and Cl2 gas. Now, the first thing is to put enthalpy of formation. It's always exo for ionic compound, which we take in A2 energetics, ionic libria, uh, sorry, in the energetics chapter, bond neighbor cycle, right? So basically, uh, whichever ionic compound we'll take, so we'll be talking about exothermic enthalpy formation. Tick equation that you balance kar lete hain. So I think that it's half Cl2. Can I rub it from here and make it more clear? Okay. So it's half Cl2. Mind it that you balance the equation immediately. If you do not, you might mess up. I can say that N is solid atomizes gives you any gas let's carry half cl2 step by step up reaction show kar de. then half cl2 atomizes it gives you cl gas plus na gas i can't say this is enthalpy of atomization of na and this is enthalpy of atomization of cl then you put the first ionic energy, Na plus 1 gas, and carry Cl gas. This is first ionic energy. Are you noticing that okay, I have actually transformed sodium solid into its ion and gas state? Now you have to convert chlorine gas into its ion gas state. So basically now what you'll do is it's electron affinity, but it's exo, the arrow goes down. And now guys, we have Na plus gas and chloride ion gas. So you can pass a smile. We have made chloride ion gas too. Now you have basically these two ions. Is that so? Na plus one and Cl negative one gas, right? Now, if I put this arrow, this means guys, enthalpy of lattice energy of NaCl gaseous ions to solid the most interesting and amazing part of bond cycle is it is a constructed vector you do not need to change any arrows and the simplest thing is against enthalpy of formation add all enthalpies so formation is equals to sum of all enthalpies isn't it so simple like in this case it is equals to enthalpy of atomization of sodium plus atomization of Cl plus first ionization energy plus first electron affinity plus lattice energy. So guys, provided that all variables are given, if there is one unknown variable, you can find the answer. Interesting, isn't it? Let's say if we put the values, if we put the values, guys, everyone. So basically, sodium, salt, sodium, gas, this value of atomization is actually 107 kilojoules per mole. The first ionic energy of sodium is actually... 494 kilojoules per mole right enthalpy of formation is minus 411 and CLCL -CL bond energy is actually 242 so I think it's half moles are being broken right so if it's half CL2 will give you CL of course you require 242 divided by 2 is equal to 121 so it's actually 121 and the first electron affinity of cl is minus 349 so what is lattice energy so can i say minus 411 is equals to 107 plus 121 plus 494 minus 349 plus lattice energy you find the answer the lattice energy comes up to be minus 784 kilojoules per mole. That's all. Let's see of aluminium oxide. 
एक एलुमिनियम ऑक्साइड का भी देखते हैं राइट लेट्स सी सो गाइस आर यू सीइंग दैट वी हैव एलुमिनियम ऑक्साइड बोर्न हेबर साइकिल इंथैल्पी ऑफ फॉर्मेशन राइट टू इंटू एटमाइजेशन टू इंटू फर्स्ट आयनाइजेशन सेकेंड आयनाइजेशन थर्ड आयनाइजेशन फर्स्ट एंड सेकेंड इलेक्ट्रॉन अफिनिटी आर यू सींग दैट द फर्स्ट इलेक्ट्रॉन अफिनिटी इज एक्सो एंड द सेकेंड इज एंडो एंड दिस इज एटमाइजेशन एंड इफ यू टू फाइंड लैटस एनर्जी इफ यू नो ऑल द इंथैल्पीज वी कैन ऑलवेज फाइन इंथैल्पी ऑफ लैटस एनर्जी जो बाय द वे यू कैन ड्रॉ दिस डायग्राम लाइक दिस टू I mean, you can start from Al plus O two, okay? It gives you Al two O three solid, solid gas. Balance it. I think this gives you two Al gas, two to atomization, three by two O two gas. Carry it. Then becomes three O gas. It is two Al gas. Have you atomized the elements? Now, first, second, and third and its energies can be done together. Two Al plus three gas. Then, first plus second electron ready. I know it's endo. I know it should be upwards. So it can be done together. So basically, enthalpies of one element can be combined together, but if they're different enthalpies, please do them differently, right? So now, if I put this arrow downward, this becomes enthalpy of lattice energy. Is that so? Isn't it? If you do the calculation, right? So basically, what we say is like this. So guys, this is the data. Which you can actually employ, and you can find out enthalpy of lattice energy. So, what is enthalpy of lattice energy? How can you find it? Against formation, add all enthalpies together, and of course, you'll get the answer, and you'll be happy, right? Okay, so can you see that against enthalpy formation, I've added all the enthalpies together, right? But please mind it that multiplication by moles should never be forgotten. Because the moment you forget it, oh, you have messed up his law. Please don't mess it up. I think that enthalpy of lattice energy it equals up to minus one five two nine three kilojoules per mole. So you can always learn Bonnier cycle, right? And I'll really recommend that. Okay, when you have revised all this lecture, you would really appreciate. it and you will really go through by making some bond in cycles for let's say mgo make bond with for like mgcl2 make bond in cycle let's say sodium oxide right make for mg 3p2 and here please don't forget right that phosphorus is p4 solid at rtp right so i think that you should make bond in cycles of these compounds and i hope that you'll enjoy moreover you can always go to my facebook page and uh, you can always see the answers over there i do uh, you know put the answers so that you can always have a connection but first of all of course please go through these and then you can always check on it and i'll really and i really recommend that uh, you do practice some questions uh, like for example november 14 43 Question one, B two. It'll be great, and uh, it's a question on basically strontium chloride. You know, you can always check out on November sixteen, forty two, and question two. I mean, it's really interesting. We can do this question here, right? Let's see the paper. Okay. So basically, this is actually November sixteen, forty-two question two. It's regarding chemical bonding and lattice energy both, but it's interesting. Most car bags contain a capsule of sodium azide. You know, when the car unfortunately hits an accident, it puts a pressure and sodium azide decomposes. 
in which element, as can be seen in the question two, right? So you say that NaN3, it gives you Na plus 3 by 2N2, or you can write a decimal as well. Part B, uh, he says that uh, if a dotting draws starting from the azidine, I think your main aim while showing such bonding, absurd bonding, your main aim is to complete the octet. Just go with the octet. Don't forget that nitrogen has five electrons in its valence shell. Right? Please don't forget that. Okay. So let's use different colors for it. I hope you'll enjoy it. Take it. Okay. So basically, it has five electrons. What if that get two electrons actually bond with the middle nitrogen atom? Right? If I show it with dot and uh, one dot here and then let's say for example let's make it blue over here and this is let's random can you see that right this is the black one right this is the blue one we have to complete the octet at the moment this N has how many electrons? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It requires one more. Oh, come on. Let's add it. From, let's say, square. Now, the negative 1 is technically due to this. Now, this N is complete. Now, left this N. I mean, it has uh, 5 electrons. Uh, we have occupied 3. Still two are there. What? How many electrons it has actually? So basically, it is one, two, three, four, five, six. It requires two more. How much this? One, two, three, four, five, six. It requires two more. But then nitrogen has two electrons still left. So I think that what if it forms a dative bond? Now I think that its octet is complete, and I strongly believe that its octet is also complete. Is that so? Interesting. So, what is lattice energy basically? I think it's a recalling thing where you have to recall these things. So, I can't say it is enthalpy change when one mole of a compound or ionic compound is formed from its gaseous ions, right? So, enthalpy change. So, it is the enthalpy change. When one mole of a compound is formed from its gaseous ions, I think it's recalling. Then he asks you that, why it's exothermic? I told my lecture, ionic bond is formed. So it's actually because... Ionic bond forms. Main fact is that a bond forms, but of course it's ionic bond. Right? So now let's see part three. He simply asks you to find out the enthalpy formation. You know that against formation you add everything together, like everything together. Right? Uh, like on the side, I can draw. Uh, a Bornheimer cycle for you so that I hope if anyone who has an unclarity on this question, I think he'll get clear of the view. Just for your good sake, if I make this, you know, it starts from zero, Na plus N2. This gives you NaN3, balance it, three by two. This gives you Na gas. This remains like this. Right? And then, you know, here it says, here, it goes straight away to this. So basically, Na gives you Na plus 1 gas. Now, this gives you straight away 
n3 negative 1 and this goes down are you seeing that against enthalpy of formation i'm adding everything together now right so basically we can say enthalpy of formation is equal to 107 plus 494 plus 142 minus 732 so the answer is plus 11 kilojoules per mole is that so now the last question he says lattice energy of rubidium nitride is this suggest why sodium nitride is more exo than that of rubidium nitride guys sodium group me upar hota hai rubidium niche hota hai so it means what it means sodium ion is smaller i mean its ionic radius is smaller so you said that ionic radius of sodium is smaller than rubidium so you score the mark right i hope that guys you would have actually learned the lattice energy you would now know what lattice energy actually means and i wish you best of luck and let's wait let's wait for episode 2 in which i'll be explaining you solubility equation solution hydration lattice once again for a while i'll be telling you some experiments i'll be showing you some videos right that'll be cool hope you enjoy the learning and it's happy learning bye